and welcome to Rat Sabha TV watching news tonight with your host Rajat Kane. Now these are the top stories of the day. The COVID-19 infections in India have crossed 5 lakh after over 18,500 new infections were reported in the last 24 hours. This is the highest single day spike in cases across the country. The overall Death count on Friday climbed to over 15,000 with 384 new fatalities. This was the seventh day in a row that India registered over 14,000 cases. It has taken India 149 days to cross the 5 lakh mark. A day of highest single day surge in COVID-19 cases in India has pushed the number of cases to over 5 lakh. India registered 18,552 new cases in the last 24 hours. With this, the total number of people in India who tested positive for coronavirus has reached 5 lakh 8,953. 384 COVID-19 deaths were also reported during the period taking the total number of casualties due to the virus to 15,685. The number of active cases stands at 1.97 lakh, while over 2.95 lakh people have recovered. Even as cases continue to rise, India has a continuously improving recovery rate. The current recovery rate is 58.13%. Maharashtra continues to be the worst affected state in the country with over 1.52 lakh cases. Out of the total cases in the state, over 79,000 have recovered from the coronavirus disease. Over 65,000 are still active. The state has reported 7,106 deaths so far. The national capital is second in terms of total cases. Delhi's COVID-19 tally now stands at 77,240. The capital has registered 2,492 deaths so far and 47,000 people have recovered from the disease. The tally of active cases stands at over 27,000. Tamil Nadu has reported 74,622 total cases of coronavirus and the death tally in the state has grown to nearly 1,000 cases. Out of the total cases in the state, 32,308 are active and 41,357 have recovered. Four states, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Delhi and Gujarat, account for two-thirds of India's overall case count. With 30% of total cases, Maharashtra has the highest case load. But the growth rate in the state is falling slowly, while the case load in Delhi and Tamil Nadu is increasing. Gujarat and Uttar Pradesh have the fourth and fifth highest case load in India. India reported the first case of COVID-19 on 30th of January. The cases took 110 days to reach 1 lakh, but just 15 days to cross 2 lakh. In the next 10 days, infections in India crossed 3 lakh. Only 8 days after that, India's COVID-19 tally crossed 4 lakh on 21st of June. Infections crossed 5 lakhs today as the world's fourth worst affected nation added around 1 lakh cases in 6 days. Globally, India is the fourth worst affected country after the US, Brazil and Russia. But it is doing much better than them. India is the slowest to cross 5 lakh cases at 149 days. US was the fastest to reach the 5 lakh figure in 80 days while it took Brazil 95 days. Russia, which is the third worst affected country, crossed the grim tally in 131 days. However, even as cases in India continue to rise, the growth rate has been declining. Cases in the country were growing at over 5% when the cases crossed the 1 lakh mark as compared to 3.7%, which is the present growth rate. From 3.12%, the fatality rate saw an initial decline but has increased in the last 10 days when over 2 lakh cases were added. India's death rate is 3.08%, much lower than the global average. India has also increased its testing capacity over the past couple of months. It has so far tested close to 80 lakh samples and is, on average, now doing nearly 2 lakh tests every day over the last week, up from about 1 lakh tests a day little over a month ago. 
However, experts have called for more testing as the daily comparison of the tests done and positive cases found is an important metric in deciding whether testing needs to be expanded. To contain the spread of the virus, India needs a low test positivity rate. TPR is the percentage of tests that are turning out to be positive for the novel coronavirus. If the rate is too high, it indicates that only the sickest are being treated and a large section of the population could be missing out. According to independent experts, India's TPR continues to be around 7 to 8 percent. There are wide variations in positivity rates between states. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan chaired 17 meeting of high-level group of ministers, that is GOM, on COVID-19 on Saturday. The GOM was told that eight states, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Delhi, Telangana, Gujarat, Uttar Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh and West Bengal are carrying 85.5% of the active caseload and 87% of total deaths in India. The GOM was informed that in the last 24 hours, Samples tested have increased to 2,20,479, taking the cumulative total to 79,96,707 samples. India now has 1,026 COVID-19 diagnostic labs, including 741 government labs and 285 private ones. Regarding health infrastructure, the GOM was told that 1,039 dedicated COVID hospitals with 1,76,275 isolation beds were available, along with 22,940 ICU beds and 76,268 oxygen-supported beds. Further, 2,398 dedicated COVID health centres with 1,39,483 isolation beds, 11,539 ICU beds, and 51,321 oxygen-supported beds have been operationalized. Moreover, 8,958 COVID care centers with 8,10,621 beds are now available to combat COVID-19 in the country. The center has provided 185.18 lakh N95 masks and 116.74 lakh personal protective equipment to states, union territories and central institutions. Redressal time on COVID-19 public grievances has also been brought down from 60 days for normal public grievances to 3 days. Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan said, India is fighting against COVID-19 better than any other country. He also said the recovery rate has surged over 58% with around 3 lakh cured and discharged patients so far. देश में हमारा रिकवरी रेट 58 प्रतिशत से भी ऊपर हो गया है और लगभग 5 लाख के करीब जो अब तक कोविड से भारत में मरीज प्रभावित हुए हैं इसमें से लगभग 3 लाख मरीज ठीक होकर घर वापस चले गए हैं द सेंट्रल टीम लेड बाय जॉइंट हेल्थ सेक्रेटरी लव अग्रवाल visited the containment zones in Thane districts to review the situation. The team also interacted with doctors in Thane's Mumbra area. As cases increase, various states are ramping up efforts to contain the spread of the coronavirus. Take a look. The Delhi government has increased beds for COVID-19 patients while increasing the number of tests. Currently, around 20,000 tests are being undertaken daily. 20,000 samples will be collected for the serological survey that was started on Saturday to ascertain the spread in the city. Abhi beds ki filhal kami nahi hai, private mein bhi aur sarkar mein bhi. Lekin hume haath pe haath rakke nahi baithna, abhi aage ka bhi hum intijam kar rahe hain. Aur bhi beds, khali padhe rahe hain beds. Lekin by chance kal ko corona badh gaya, to uski tiyari karni hai, isi liye aur bhi khub beds ka hum intijam kar rahe hain. Goa Chief Minister Pramod Savan said the onus is on everyone to take precautions against COVID-19. This came on a day when his government for the first time acknowledged community transmission. The state had 667 active cases and 370 recoveries. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath expressed satisfaction over the daily COVID-19 testing capacity in the state reaching the 20,000 mark. 
He said the target should be to increase it to 25,000 each day. The center has provided 500 ventilators to Himachal Pradesh in its ongoing fight free of cost. Of these, 178 are transport ventilators and the rest 322 are ICU ventilators. Jharkhand has announced an extension of the lockdown till 31st of July on Friday. Only essential services will be permitted and movement of individuals will be prohibited between 9 p.m. and 5 a.m. Interstate and intrastate bus services will remain shut. Assam, Chennai, West Bengal have also implemented lockdown in some parts. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Saturday addressed the 90th birthday celebrations of Reverend Joseph Mark Thoma Metropolitan in Pathan Mitha in Kerala via video conferencing. In his address, he spoke at length about measures the government has taken to bring about economic growth. The central government is taking steps to mitigate the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the economy, said Prime Minister Modi while addressing the event of Kerala's Marthoma Church. Our government has always been guided by sensitivity and a long-term vision to make India a growth engine. We have taken decisions not from comfortable government office in Delhi, but after feedback from people of the ground. It is this spirit that ensures every Indian has access to a bank account. Over 8 crore families have access to smoke-free kitchens. Over 1.5 crore houses have been made to give shelter to the homeless. India is home to the largest healthcare scheme in the world, Ayushman Bharat. The Prime Minister said India is much better placed than many other nations. But he cautioned that people should not let their guard down yet. Prime Minister Modi said in the past few weeks, the government has taken people-friendly and growth-friendly decisions. In the last few weeks, the government of India has addressed both short-term and long-term issues relating to the economy. From the sea to space, from the farms to the factories. People friendly and growth friendly decisions have been taken. The call for Atmanirbhar Bharat, self reliant India, will ensure economic strength and prosperity for every Indian. A month ago, the union cabinet cleared the Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampada Yojana. This scheme is going to transform our fisheries sector. Prime Minister Modi commended Dr. Joseph Martoma for dedicating his life for the betterment of society and the nation. Dr. Martoma praised the government's efforts to tackle the COVID-19 crisis. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. The number of new coronavirus cases is rising sharply in several countries since the easing of lockdown restrictions, including in the United States, even as pandemic curve is flattening in the parts of Europe. On Friday, the United States reported more than 40,000 new COVID-19 cases, its biggest daily jump so far. The nationwide cases surpassed 2.46 million with over 1,25,000 deaths. Most U.S. states are reimposing restrictions in view of the new cases. Texas ordered closing of all bars from Friday, while Florida banned alcohol at such establishments. In addition, restaurant capacity and outdoor gathering has also been scaled down in Texas. Other states, including Arizona, Arkansas, Delaware and Idaho, have also temporarily halted plans of further reopening the economy. 
The White House Coronavirus Task Force held a press conference on Friday saying that the COVID-19 pandemic has resurged in many states and issuing a warning to younger people that they could be posing a risk to the elderly who may be more vulnerable to the coronavirus. The overwhelming majority now of people getting infected are young people, likely the people that you see in the clips and in the paper who are out in crowds enjoying themselves, understandably, no blame there understandably. But the thing that you really need to realize that when you do that, you are part of a process. So if you get infected, you will infect someone else who clearly will infect someone else. We know that happens. On the same day, Brazil reported 46,860 new cases, bringing the country's total to over 1.2 million infections and more than 55,000 deaths. Mexico on Friday announced easing restrictions further, allowing more businesses to reopen in parts of the country despite continued high infection and death rates. Shops, street markets and athletic complexes with limited capacity and hours will be allowed to reopen by July 6. Bars, gyms, schools and other businesses will remain closed. Britain is planning to drop a 14-day quarantine period for people arriving from countries having a low risk for COVID-19 infection. It is reviewing travel arrangements with countries including France, Greece and Spain in this regard. On Friday, French President Emmanuel Macron held discussions with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Macron expressed full support and solidarity with Russia on the health, economic and social impact of the pandemic. Meanwhile, new cases have also been reported from some countries that had initial success in controlling the virus. On Saturday, China reported 21 new cases, including 18 in Beijing. The city has reported over 297 cases since June 11th, when it reported its first case in the current outbreak at a local food market. South Korea also reported 51 new cases, including 35 in the Seoul metropolitan area. Australia's Victoria state recorded 41 new coronavirus cases on Saturday. Victoria now has 204 of the country's total of 270 active cases. Most new infections are linked to travellers arriving from abroad as the country continues to ease restrictions. On Saturday, two new COVID-19 cases were reported in New Zealand, bringing the number of confirmed cases to 1,172. The number of active cases in the country is now 16. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization is planning to deliver 2 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccine by the end of 2021. In addition, 500 million tests and 245 million courses of treatments will be provided to low- and middle-income countries by mid-2021. It's clear that to bring COVID-19 under control and to save lives, we need effective vaccines, diagnostics and therapeutics in unprecedented quantities and at unprecedented speed. And it's clear that because all people are at risk of COVID-19, all people should have access to all the tools to prevent, detect and treat it, not only those who can afford to pay for them. Worldwide, the COVID-19 pandemic is nearing 10 million infections with over 4,97,000 fatalities. India has warned China that trying to alter the status quo on the ground by resorting to force will not just damage peace in the border areas, but can also impact the broader bilateral relationships. In an interview to news agency PTI, India's ambassador to China Vikram Misri said, the only way to resolve the current military standoff in eastern Ladakh was for Beijing to realize that force or coercion is not the right way forward. Mystery asserted that actions taken by the Chinese forces have damaged considerable trust in the bilateral relationship. He said the Chinese side needs to take a careful view of the relations and to decide which direction the ties should move. Mystery said the Chinese side also needs to stop creating obstruction in the normal patrolling patterns of Indian troops. He rubbished China's claim of sovereignty over Galwan Valley in Ladakh as completely untenable saying such exaggerated claims are not going to help the situation. On Friday, the External Affairs Ministry had said China has been amassing troops and armaments along the LSE in eastern Ladakh since early May. 
it warned that continuation of the situation will vitiate the relationship according to news reports india is waiting for chinese troops to fulfill its june 6th commitment of de-escalating and disengaging its troops along the 1597 km line of actual control in the western sector bjp president jp nadda and former party president nitin gadkari have hit back at the congress party for its continuous offensive against the center speaking at a press conference jp nadda posed several questions before the opposition party including about the alleged donations from the chinese embassy to the rajiv gandhi foundation earlier he had questioned the congress over a memorandum of understanding with the chinese communist party and sought to know the nature of the mou nitin gadkari also questioned the congress party's record on issues concerning national security earlier the congress termed the indo chinese border face off as one of india's biggest diplomatic failures Senior Congress leader Kapil Sibal on Saturday also demanded that Prime Minister Narendra Modi clear the air about the line of actual control and publicly condemn the brazen Chinese incursion. On National MSME Day on Saturday, micro, small and medium enterprises minister Nitin Gadkari said that Narendra Modi government will do its best to make India a better place to do business. Addressing a webinar, Gadkari said the government is backing small businesses in this hour of need. He added that his vision is to increase MSME's contribution in India's GDP to over 50 percent. गांव में हमारी food processing industry हो, agro product के processing industry हो, pre cooling plant हो, cold storage हो, विविध प्रकार के उद्योग अगर वहाँ खुलेंगे, तो गांव के युवाओं को migrant होकर के मुंबई, दिल्ली, कलकत्ता, चेन्नई जाने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी। उनको अपने गांव में रोजगार मिलेगा एमएसएमई सेक्टर इज वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट जॉब क्रिएटर्स इन द कंट्री इट कंट्रीब्यूट्स 29% ऑफ कंट्रीज जीडीपी एंड 48% ऑफ एक्सपोर्ट्स एज द कंट्री बैटल्स पैंडेमिक द गवर्नमेंट हैज अनाउंस्ड वेरियस स्कीम्स टू सपोर्ट दिस सेक्टर इन मई 2020 फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर निर्मला सीतारमण अनाउंस्ड अ 3.5 ट्रिलियन आत्मनिर्भर भारत पैकेज फॉर एमएसएमईज फ्रॉम द कोविड स्टिमुलस पैकेज All the 15th Finance Commission strongly backed the government's efforts to revive the economy in the wake of COVID-19 pandemic, citing the resumption of both employment and economic activity. Commission Chairman N K Singh felt the economy is showing signs of recovery. The commission felt employment numbers have also gone up very sharply. Now, speaking to media after meeting of 15th Finance Commission, he said. This is the time in which the world believes I think that what needs to be protected is expenditure over fiscal deficit and this is exactly what the central government has done this year we must not concentrate on fiscal or debt we must concentrate on the fastest possible revival of the economy observing that the agriculture sector has been the least affected the finance commission said it will be instrumental in the revival of the economy Well, external affairs minister S J Shankar has called for dispassionate scrutiny and reform of all multilateral entities to make them purpose built for present times. Addressing a virtual ministerial meeting of Alliance for Multilateralism, J Shankar said the world stands at a transformative moment, which is why he said India continues to call for reformed multilateralism relevant for the current age. Jayashankar maintained that the world is facing a two-pronged attack of a pandemic and misinformation going viral. He said coronavirus pandemic has devastated the globalized economic system and has fundamentally affected ways of living. The minister added suspicion of human interaction is fueled more often than not by fake news, wrong information and targeted disinformation. Jay Shankar asserted that the way forward is to strengthen the belief in scientific approaches. He further stressed that everyone must set aside politics and focus on facts. President Ramnath Kovind on Saturday promulgated the Banking Regulation Amendment Ordinance 2020. The ordinance amends the Banking Regulation Act 1949 as applicable to cooperative banks it seeks to protect depositors and strengthen cooperative banks by improving governance and oversight by extending the RBI's powers to cover cooperative banks as well further it aims to ensure professionalism in cooperative banks and enables their access to capital 
The ordinance also amends Section 45 of the Banking Regulation Act to enable mergers and restructuring of banks without having to order a moratorium, which limits withdrawals by depositors and also disrupts the banking system. Earlier this week, the Union Cabinet decided to bring all cooperative banks under the RBI. Union Information and Broadcasting Minister Prakash Javadekar said that the move is intended to assure depositors of their money. The government's move affects 1,482 urban cooperative banks and 58 multi-state cooperative banks. They have about 8.6 crore depositors. Their total savings deposits amount to 4.85 lakh crore rupees. Voters above 65 years of age, people who are tested positive for COVID-19 and those under quarantine will be allowed to use postal ballot. The Union Law Ministry has changed the conduct of election rules for voting to enable this after Election Commission had approached it recently. The election panel asked the Ministry to allow COVID-19 positive voters to use the postal ballot to exercise their franchise. This is in addition to the existing postal ballot facilities for people with disabilities and electors employed in the essential services. Post-COVID-19 pandemic, Bihar will be the first state to have assembly polls. The state has nearly 7.2 crore voters. The term of the 243-member assembly ends on 29th of November. Chief Election Commissioner Sunil Arora in an interview to a daily said that the commission is mulling measures to reduce the impact of COVID-19, including restrictions on the number of electors per polling station to a maximum of 1,000 as opposed to the present limit of 1,600. Auxiliary polling stations will be created for additional voters. The CEC further said that all stakeholders have to ensure appropriate arrangements regarding social distancing, sanitization, disinfection, use of masks and gloves, and so on. Vice President M. Venkai Naidu paid tributes to Bankim Chan Chattopadhyay on his 182nd birth anniversary on Saturday. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu paid tribute to Bankim Chan Chattopadhyay on his 182nd birth anniversary on Saturday. Remembering the great writer and poet who composed India's national song, One Day Matram, the Vice President said, Bankim Chan Chattopadhyay was also an accomplished journalist who founded Bangadarshan. Vice President said, younger generations must explore the works of Bankim Chan Chattopadhyay extensively. Well, that's it in this edition of News Tonight. Thanks for watching Raj Sabha TV and keep following our channel for more national and international top stories. Thank you and good night.